All right, Andy, what are you up to? Well, funny you should ask. Yeah. So tell us what you're up to. What's your okay. story? What are you doing? And yeah. Why? So uh, we're, as I mentioned, we're we um, part of a group that has done these. Um, I'm part of a group that has done these kind of spectacular media actions, <laughs> and we filmed them. Oh yeah, let me uh, try to arrange. Oh, perfect. Um, okay. Um, uh, and the idea we we filmed these actions that have um, tried to. Uh, you know, these funny actions that have um, been about creating a media impact. And a lot of them are, are very funny, uh, you know, watching me very nervous <laughs> about to go on BBC and represent Dow Chemical and take responsibility for... Why would you for, be nervous? Who knows? Um, yeah, 300 crazy. million people make me nervous. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, so it's, it's entertainment, um, and it's, it's about communicating an issue, uh, a problem, and also communicating that there's something to do about the problem. Mm -hmm. So we've made two movies so far, The Yes Men and the second one, The Yes Men Fix the World, and they've both been, um, they've both followed the, the same kind of arc where here's the problem, here's some funny stuff to get you thinking about the problem, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, swallow the, the pill, um, and here's the solution at the very end, the last 20 minutes of the film, 15 minutes, here's the solution, it's pretty obvious, um, now go out and do something. Yeah. And the now go out and do something didn't really work. I mean, it did. It did because you know we don't know how it worked. We don't know. Uh, people come up to us all the time and say your movie really inspired me. It was the first thing I saw. The Bhopal action really made me very uncomfortable, and I started doing stuff. You know, it it seeps into the culture somehow, but we don't know how. And this one um, is based on our theory that. This second film. This third film. The third film. The Yes Men Are Revolting. Mm -hmm. um, let me put that up there. This is the third there film. Uh, no, I don't need internet. That's fine. Um, who needs internet? Uh, <laughs> this is the third film, The Yes Men Are Revolting, and it's based on the theory that um, a lot of people, enough people, know there's a problem. Mm -hmm. Way more than enough already. Um, and enough people also know there's an obvious solution to things, that there's a better way to do things than this. Um, and it, it focuses on climate change, this film, but it's really bigger than that. Um, not that anything is bigger than that, but um, a lot, enough people know that, that there is climate change and that you know, if we keep going this way, um, there's a higher and higher likelihood that things are going to go really haywire. Um, maybe there's some facts that people don't know, like that 400,000 people already die every year from climate change in the developing mm -hmm. world. Um, but people basically know that there's a problem and that, that there's something to do about it, that we can fix it. There's green technology, we have all the technology we need, et cetera, et cetera. We don't need to add much more to that information. What we need is um, the, uh, to communicate the idea that action is something to do, mm -hmm. that it actually matters. Um, and we don't know how it works. We don't know why things change or how things change, but that cumulatively, if enough people take action in different ways, things do change. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty reliable, actually. You can, you can actually look at movements and say, well, this changed, that changed, that changed. And pretty much everything good about our society changed because it happened because of activists. Mm -hmm. Um, you mm -hmm. know, the eight-hour workday in the U.S. or mm -hmm. anywhere actually started because of some people in Chicago. Um, you know, th there's all kinds of things that, er, er, pretty much everything. Um, and in our film, there's a number of actions that we do, and at the end, we look and realize, oh my God, they all, uh, not our actions, but the, the movements around our actions actually succeeded in achieving the aims that we were looking for, that our action was a part of. Um, so that's one, one thing that our film communicates, that action matters because it wins. Another thing it communicates is that action is really, really fun. Hmm. And we do that by, um, through a personal story, by really focusing on me and Mike as characters, as people, 
um, who go through emotional ups and downs and uh, end up at one point in the film in complete despair, giving up, not wanting to continue, uh, just basically deciding we're going to stop and this is, that enough is enough. We're not getting along. Uh, this stuff isn't working. Uh, you know, what good does it do? Yeah. And that moment in the film is um, the Copenhagen, Copenhagen Climate Talks when the whole movement is feeling like, shit, we've been pressuring our leaders and, mm -hmm. you know, trying to get these top officials to actually do something for the future of humanity and they're not doing it, even though... 50,000 of us showed up in Copenhagen, massive pressure, they're not doing anything. And the next twist is um, the Arab Spring and Occupy Wall Street. Okay, the answer is we actually need a revolution. We need a revolution. We need to take action ourselves and not rely on our leaders. We need to actually get active, each of us, in a very direct way and force our leaders to do something. Hmm. Um, that's the idea of democracy. And our answer to that, our particular answer, because we know how to do this one funny thing, um, is to do more of it and to encourage others to do more of it. Um, so that's our answer. There's answers for everybody else. We're not like, this is just one kind of thing that we do. There's many, many things to do. Um, but at the end of the film, so that's the way the film works. It communicates that action is fun and works. Um, and then the other thing that this film does that the other films didn't do is really focus on the, okay, now get active and do something. So we're, um, in the last film, it ends, and we, we tried to get, like, we went into theaters after showing the film and said, okay, now let's go do something. Let's go chalk up a bank or whatever, uh, draw all over a bank or, you know, uh, levitate a, an internment center or whatever. <laughs> we did all those things, but it, it was, step. yeah, obvious. <laughs> but it, it, you know, they, and they worked. We did levitate the internment center, but it didn't <laughs> actually stop the internment, obviously. Um, and it wasn't really sustained, yeah. more importantly. Like, right. every, you know, that was one moment, and then did it translate into people systematically levitating internment centers. I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. I haven't no. heard of that. No, I don't think so. Yeah. So this one, we're <laughs> building into the end of the film uh, this thing that we're calling the... Uh, oop. Let me get there. Action switchboard, which is... Um, it's basically a platform that enables audiences to... Um, to join with actions that um, already exist mm -hmm. or to start their own Great. around uh, issues that matter to them. So when I was talking about the tools yeah. needed, this is, this is the tool that you found that was needed in the movement. That yeah. there was sort of a people weren't finding the right actions to connect to or, or whatever. Yeah, so, yeah. Right. Uh, well, I mean, you're sitting there and you see us doing these things on screen and you see other activists doing things on screen with us, and you wonder, well, how can I be, how can I be doing that? Yeah. And this is the answer. Great. There'll be, it'll be kind of like a Kickstarter. There'll be sort of um, actions, teasers for actions that people have already started, and lists of things that people need for those actions. Like, you know, I need somebody who can make video, or I need 20 people who mm -hmm. are willing to get arrested, mm -hmm. or things like that. And It'll be a call, and we have a mailing list of 100,000 people already who are very uh, relatively active. Mm -hmm. um, they actually do stuff when we send out a call, say, you know, meet us here, we're going to do this funny thing. They show up, like, much more than Avaz type lists yeah. or move yeah. on type lists. Yeah. Um, so using that list to, b like, if you have an action, you're, let's say you're in Amsterdam and you have an idea for an action, you could um, add it to the switchboard. Um, a staff member, so it's very heavily human moderated. It's basically not really a tool at all. It's like um, just a way of communicating with people at the Yes Lab. Um, somebody will see the suggestion, say, oh yeah, that's a great idea, but it could be a little better. Mm -hmm. Here's some ideas, why don't you read this? work with them, do a little brainstorm, come up with a great action, great teaser, and then connect them to people who can help them do that in Amsterdam cool. or wherever, and then help them carry it off, too. 
And so, so in the f in the how does this show up in the film? You said it was at the end of the film. Yeah. It, well, we haven't quite finished. Um, but so is the idea <laughs> that this will be somehow referred to in the film, and why yeah. is that? Why is it important to do that for you? Well, we'll use it in the film to actually um, do one of the last actions in cool. the film, um, and that is important. Well, there's a couple reasons. So that we demonstrate it so that people can then go, oh, you know, just the way people have kind of followed us as characters mm -hmm. and gone through the kind of depression and despair and giving up and then come back and realize, oh, wait, this is the fun thing to do, this is the effective thing to do, um, or an effective thing to do. Um, at the end, similarly, they'll see us using this tool and they'll go, oh, I can use this tool too. And more prosaically, you can't actually include a URL at the end of your film in the, in the credits. The broadcasters cut it out. Yes, so. they do. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a way of Great. In, in embedding it in the film so that there's no way they can cut it out. Um, and oh, the other thing I wanted to mention about this is it's uh, on the question of what people do, each of these actions has to fit into a goal tree. So we're coming up mm -hmm. with a goal tree where we have some high-level issue goals, like you know climate change, uh, making a livable planet, mm. uh, democracy, establishing democracy. Seems uh, reasonable. Yeah, and then there's a bunch of sub-goals. And in, in the local versus international question that somebody asked, um, we're really excited right now about this um, idea of municipal civil disobedience. There's this um, organization in the US, CELDF, Center for en Environment, Law, and Democracy, or something like that, that um, they, they work with individual uh, groups at the very local level who establish laws. It's very easy and possible, not easy, but it's possible to establish laws at a municipal level um, banning hydrocarbons, for example, mm. banning fracking, um, banning all kinds of things that you don't want, and sure. establishing good things. And those laws are often illegal. Like, they often get overturned, and they have to go through court, and they, um, you know, they inspire the ire, the anger of um, big companies. Mm -hmm. So it's a kind of municipal civil disobedience, but the theory is that if enough of that happens, eventually it kind of um, pressures higher and higher levels until finally you're, you're pressuring national levels. Mm -hmm. But that in the U.S., it's almost impossible to actually affect national uh, politicians, as we saw with Copenhagen, mm. you know, um, and the whole lead up to that. It's probably true everywhere. It's almost impossible to actually change what top leaders do because the pressures of industry are so high. But at the local level, it is possible. So we're building the goals from very local up um, to higher level goals like stop climate change or keep fossil fuels in the ground. Cool. And I could show examples of actions in our film that um, result in, resulted in, not our actions, but the movements resulted in change, or we could. Well, I'm also curious, too, lessons that you've learned. I feel like you're, you're not old, but very wise mm -hmm. in, in, this, in this area yeah. now, and how do you, and how people sort of react to watching film and how they act or, or do not act after seeing it, and like, what, what would you have done differently, or what have you learned in the process to, move people to action? I don't, I, I actually don't have an answer to that. Okay. I mean, this is the answer, basically. Yeah. Um, you know, I, it's, it's really mysterious to me how things change. Yeah. Like, it's very rare in any struggle that you can point to one action that does something. Agreed. You know, you do a thing, it systematically seems to fail. Yeah. <laughs> at, or at least not achieve the aim that you're So go get them, guys. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. But that, uh, the seem is the important part. It seems to fail because, yeah. you know, I mean, I could show, I, you know, there's six or seven actions in this film that, um, or related to the film that, that in themselves obviously didn't do anything. Yeah. But then the movement did. Right. And, you know, within six months, things had changed. So, and that's, that's the same across the board. Yeah. Like any movement you want to yeah. look at, there's, there's very, almost never, I think, a single action that really does it. Mm -hmm. But when you build it. It's all accumulated. Yeah. And I mean, we don't know how, like, making people laugh or getting mainstream media attention for things changes anything. We don't know. 
Yeah. It's, it's not, I don't think there is probably an answer generally, mm -hmm. except maybe in rare, rare moments. Yeah. Um, a lot of guesses. There's a lot of guesses. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, w I will say though that, and this kind of transitions into Brit Doc a little bit, one of the films recently honored, um, nominated for um, an award from Brit Doc was Invisible War. And as we speak right now, speaking of national level change, um, the Military Justice Improvement Act in the U.S. is happening and will totally change the way that sexual assault in the U.S. military um, is being handled. Y yesterday, I was on the phone with like 18 senators trying to demand it to happen. It all, and it, I, I swear to you, it happened because of this film. Someone said to me once, um, I, they had said, oh, you know, what kinds of films are fledgling working on these days? And I had mentioned The Invisible War. And if you haven't seen it, it's about... Um, sexual assault in the U.S. military. It's uh, sort of in very much, in a lot of ways in the U.S. broke the story, um, was sort of a very, sort of on a very journalistic level, told this story in a deep way for the first time in the U.S. And someone said to me, oh, interesting, you, you funded the, the Invisible War. That came out at such an interesting time when we all started talking, we all were talking about that issue. What great timing that film came out. I was like, no, we're talking about the issue because of the freaking film. <laughs> you know, that's, that's why we're all talking about this issue in the United States right now is because when this film came out, three days before it premiered at Sundance, Leon Panetta, the Secretary of Defense at the time, um, saw the film and, and made a statement about it. It all trickled down from there. And so we can make change on a federal level for some issues sometimes. It's hard, it's rare, um, but there are real success stories out there. Um, so just wanted to say that. And, but I, 